Hey there, everyone. I'm Bo. And I'm Jamie. And this is the only podcast that dares, that has the sheer gall to ask the question, Hey, Jamie, what you been watching for 2022? I watched 69 movies Ooh, for 2022. I know. And I, well, and I actually could have watched more, but I was like, that number's perfect. I'm going to stop there. <laughs> I'm, I refuse to watch anything else. Um, yeah. So this is our annual, this, the second annual um, top 10 show where we talk about our top 10 list for uh, the previous year, the top 10 horror movies of, of last year. And I love these. This is one of my favorite things to do. I do too. I always have a good time with it. And uh, it's funny because, uh, you know, you might look back on a list that you made like six months ago and go, really, I I probably would have moved those around, you know, but Mm -hmm. uh, so it's fun to see where you are at that time. And then later on, look back and see if anything changed. I told somebody, it might've been Kate. I was talking to about this the other day where when I put these lists together, I always think like, how am I ever going to get 10 movies out of this year that I think are really great? And then by the time I assemble the list, I'm like, Oh, I got to cut 10 movies out of this list. Yeah. That's the hard part is I'll go through everything I've watched and I jot down the, uh, the contenders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I go through and see how many I have to cut, and then I'm, and then like I'll go through and go, okay, these are for sure. Like these are definitely on the list. And even then, it gets hard though because I'll have uh, like fourteen that I definitely want on the list, and somebody's got to go. So yeah, yeah, I'm the same way. I like I go through, and it's for me, it's a very simple question as I'm ordering the list and and kind of cutting and pasting things around. It's just like, what, what did I like more? You know, I mean, it's very unscientific. Um, every now and again, one will creep on that's just like, I feel like this needs to be on my top 10, even if it's not the most fun I had, but it feels like something that I want to highlight or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so there, there's at least one of those on my list that's like, I don't know that this was a great time <laughs> watching a movie, but it, it it's something I feel necessary uh to keep on the list but before we get into that before uh we 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 get into the actual top tens we're gonna do some honorable mentions and i've got eh, like four that i can say are are legit honorable mentions so i don't know how many you have about that okay okay um i'll tell you what you go first and just run through all of them and okay. then, um, and then I'll do mine that way. We don't, because we'll do back and forth once we start doing the actual top 10. Yeah. Okay. Uh, honorable mentions, uh, first off, it was the, it was a pleasant surprise and I was happy about that. Uh, and that is bodies, bodies, bodies. Mm-hmm. I had a really good time with that one. Uh, same category. I actually watched it in the theater the very next night. And that is orphan first kill. Mm-hmm. That also surprised me with how much fun I had with that. Then um, I did want to mention this one, even though it's not actually a horror film at all. I feel like horror fans can enjoy it. And that is Violent Night. Um, mm. it, uh, it's violent. <laughs> it's very violent, but I don't consider it horror in the least. But it is uh, just a super fun movie. Um, one that... <laughs> This is so much fun. I had the best time with this movie. Go and on. it's uh it's well, you know me. I love animal attack movies. Uh-huh. Oh, sure. sure, sure. Love them. So I had to squeeze in a watch of Beast. It didn't make my list, <laughs> but I still want to mention how fun it is watching Idris Elba beat the shit out of a lion with his bare hands. <laughs> Ooh, I haven't seen that yet. I need to see that. <laughs> Honestly, I think you'll get a kick out of it because you're like me as far as movies like that go. And uh, I really think I I really think you'll think it's fun. Like, I think it would be a great triple feature with Beast, Prey slash Uncaged from a couple years ago Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, like Ghost in the Darkness. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. You know, and just have a good time with it. But this one is it's actually they they play it straight, which makes it even that much more fun i think but i like the characters 
it's uh, really violent. And, uh, you know, there's just this unhinged lion that is out of control and it's really fun. So I definitely recommend checking that out. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, and then there's just one more, and this one actually hurts my soul that I didn't put it on my list. It is one of my favorite films of the year, Mm -hmm. but for me personally, I just can't call it a horror film. And a lot of people do, and that is totally fine. Like, I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm Mm -hmm. just saying for me, and, uh, that is the menu. I, oh, you know, I just watched that last night. Yeah. Yeah, I fucking love that movie. I really loved good. that movie. But it to me, it just comes off more of like a, a dark satire. Mm-hmm. And um, I just didn't feel any horror in it, uh, at least. Well, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but I have like a definition of like thriller versus horror that I use in my own head. And like for me, a horror film is one where the fear and, and the horror of the situation is kind of aimed at the viewer. Like, you know, that you're expected to get, you know, the shivers from it or something. And a thriller is more when all of that stuff is aimed at the cast and you yourself don't feel any fear or peril. Like, in other words, mm-hmm. it's not going to keep me locked in my library. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. For, for, yeah, right. <laughs> so even no though there was... to come get you because you watch the menu. Exactly. So even though it's um, there's a lot of dark stuff that goes on in the film, it just it didn't feel like a horror to me. It feels more like a satirical thriller. Mm-hmm. And that is not to say, though, it is not one of my favorite films of the year because it absolutely is. I think Ray Fiennes was brilliant. And by the way, that's the last movie when we were talking about doing recording. And I was mm-hmm. like, I've got one more that doesn't hit streaming until this day like and i was like i have to watch that one and that was that that was the one yeah i um i caught that late as well oh obviously if i just watched it last night but um yeah 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 me and uh and the missus really enjoyed it we we had a really good time with it and and she in particular i think really loved it so uh, oh yeah and i'm telling you his character spoke to me I spent a lot of years in the restaurant business and uh, Ray Fiennes, I was just like, yes, you tell him. You know? <laughs> like I was, it's probably wrong of me, but I was totally on his side. <laughs> right. Well, you know, it, it, it's really interesting. We had a, a, a discussion as we were, you know, going to bed after watching the movie about, you know, what the, the ultimate theme of that movie was. Obviously a lot of it is about, you know, elevating something as simple as food to a level that only the rich can afford it. And even they don't appreciate it at that point. Mm -hmm. And it just becomes an exercise in, in sort of, you know, culinary masturbation where you have chefs doing these intricate meals that nobody really cares about. Really. They just, it's the pretension of it all. Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, but uh, anyway, I, I was going to talk more about it. It's like, ah, that, that gets into spoilers. But if you haven't seen the menu if, and you're listening to this, you should watch the menu. The menu is really, really good. And and it does have a lot of interesting things because I, you know, worked in restaurants uh, for years as well. And it definitely speaks to that sense of, like, what it means to serve the public. Uh. And... Uh, and one thing I will spoil, but one of my favorite moments in the movie is the Nicholas Holt character who is a, you know, died in the wool foodie, the kind of person who's got all this fancy equipment at home and can pick all these ingredients out of the food that he's eating. There's a point where they're like, great, you know what? You are so good at this. Here's a chef's code. Now go make us something. And he can't because that's, you know, he only knows enough to talk about it, but not do it. And yeah. anyway, it's so good. And uh, the the insert of like Tyler, Tyler's bullshit <laughs> where it lists what he makes. It, it's so funny. It's um, the, the guys who wrote it are writers for the Seth Meyers late night show. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Which made a whole lot of sense. As I was watching, I was like, oh, okay, that that totally tracks this is very much a a 
like you said, it's a, a satire in the Jonathan Swift kind of vein. Um, yeah, really that, good. Yeah, I think you nailed that. And uh, like my, like one of my favorite things was Elsa. Mm-hmm. The uh, and just when she goes over to that one table and they're asking her for something and she goes, no. And I'm like, yes! Oh, yeah, when they're I asking have, for the bread, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, I've dreamed for that. You know, yeah. I've been living my whole life waiting to just fucking tell somebody, no. Yeah. <laughs> you can't have it. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, when they're like, no, 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 you, you like, you know you who know we who are, we right? are? Of course, Yeah, of course I know who you are. Well, then yeah. how about you slice some bread? No. Uh, no. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> um... Do you okay. have anything else or all? No, that's okay. it for mine. Um, so here's some of my honorable mentions. Um, Something in the Dirt, the Benson and Moorhead movie. Oh, shit. I still, I never got a chance to watch that. And I had it jotted down because you mentioned you were going to watch it. And I was like, oh, I should watch that. Yeah, and really good. Really good. Um, Very much of their stripe like it it is definitely a benson and moorhead joint um interesting because they are in it and oh. and they made it during lockdown it's it's got a very small cast and crew that like they dedicate the movie to making movies with your friends and even though it is um like as small a movie as it is it's real contained it's mostly set in a couple of apartments it definitely feels like their kind of jam where it's like, okay, well there it's a documentary that is partially staged. And the question becomes how much of this documentary is real? How much of it is not? There's like this conspiracy rabbit hole that the characters go down. And at the end of the day, you're kind of left with the question of, okay, well how much of that was real? And how much is it just like they believed it because they were obsessed with it or that they were obsessed with it because it made for a good film. And it like, it, it, it asks more questions than it answers kind of thing. Um, but a really enjoyable, um, uh, fresh, uh, on Hulu, I thought was, was a whole lot of fun. Didn't quite make my list, but I thought that was, that was a good movie. Um, Sebastian Sid, Stan kills it in that movie. Very, very good. He's really fun. Um, Sissy, uh, which was a, a Shutter film uh, that I thought was really good. That that I think did a great job of capturing that sort of millennial influencer kind of thing, um, and the the lack of personal responsibility that goes along with some of that. Uh, which which I really enjoyed, and also on my uh, list is Bodies, 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 which barely missed my top ten list. But um, you know, we talked about this before. I think Bodies, Bodies, Bodies is uh, a tremendous amount of fun, and the last you know what sixty seconds of the movie <laughs> is is maybe the best. And I love a movie that just knows how to end well. Yeah, and, that, oh, it's so good. That was so great. I uh, it came very close to making my list too, and it had just was way more fun than it had any right to be. <laughs> like that, I than this movie that just pretty much came out of nowhere. You know, mm-hmm. it just was so much fun. So, I mean, it was eight twenty four, yeah. and I was like, eh, you know, I always tend to enjoy those, with the exception of maybe the lamb um, or lamb, whatever the the name of that was. Um, but for the most part, you know, I'm pretty in the bag for uh, A24. Um, well, let's get to it. Let's get let's get to the real shit. Uh, how about you start off? What's your number 10 uh, for the, okay. the year of our Lord 2022? Well, my number 10 is a movie that we've uh, we've actually talked about, I think. Mm-hmm. I want to say we did. And that was uh, Speak No Evil. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which I I caught up to on your recommendation and thought it was quite good. Oh, nice. Okay, so yep, yeah, that is my number ten. It's uh, yeah, I thought it was very effective and 
I really enjoyed it. Yeah. It was a little hyperbolic, but uh, that was the point. I think he's he had a point to make, and so you know a lot of people are like, "Oh, I would never do that. I would never, you know, you can't, you know." But but I, the point is that yeah, we would do a lot of things that we don't want to do just because that's just who we are, you know. Yeah, it reminded me a little bit of Get Out in that so much of that movie hinges on being overly polite. Yes. In in situations where it's like, oh, you should absolutely leave, but because of the way that we're socialized, it's like, well, mm-hmm. you you want to give people the benefit of the doubt, especially, you know, there's that one scene um, where the 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 couple that is hosting, you know, the the other couple, uh, where you know the the they they want to leave, and the couple that's hosting them are like, what did we do? Tell us what we did. And we had this great day planned today. Like, just give us a chance, you know. Like, let us be, let us try to make this up to you. We didn't understand that you were, you were uncomfortable. And it, it, by all accounts, they should be like, "Well, we appreciate, it, but we're getting the fuck out of here." Um, but they stay, and then things get, of course, worse. Um, but it's really good, really good. Um, awesome. Yeah. Oh. My all right, so my number ten is Phil Tippett's Mad God. I have heard so many people talk about that one, but I haven't seen it. This is the thing I was telling you about earlier, where it's like I don't know that I had a great time watching this movie, but it is unforgettable. Um, once you have seen it, you will never not have seen Mad God. You know, it's. Um, when I was, when I was writing it up, one of the descriptions that I used was it's like watching a a stop motion version of all the animated stuff from Pink Floyd's The Wall, where it's that kind of surreal and, you know, anti-corporate and anti-authoritarian and it's got a real political statement to make and I'm not sure I'm smart enough to get all of it because it feels so heavily symbolic, but it's it's crazy yeah if you haven't seen it you should watch mad god just for the experience of having seen it and there's stuff that i will absolutely carry with me from that movie that just visuals where you're like oh my god that is horrifying or disgusting or you know bleak it is a very bleak movie that's that's certainly one of its primary characteristics is it is grim uh, but it, it's, it's fascinating. I like, I don't know how the movie ever got made. I don't know who would have put the money up for it. Well, didn't it take him like 30 years to make it? I think or so. Something I like think, that? yeah, I think it took him a, a, a long, long time to actually put it together. And it's again, just unlike anything else that I have on my list. Cause there's just, it, 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 it it's a movie that is unlike most movies you'll see. I can't think of a really good, like I said, other than the animated stuff from Pink Floyd, the wall, that's the closest analog I can think of as far as the vibe of it. And the, the, uh, sort of anarchy of it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. If you haven't seen it, you should absolutely watch it. Um, what about, uh, what's your number nine? (laughs) Okay. My number nine is Pearl. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I mean, just it's it's Ty West, it's uh, Mia Goth. It, I think she did an incredible job, and it looks beautiful. And yeah, I mean, it was really really good. It's it's not as high up as I think maybe a lot of people would expect, but uh, that's just because of you know kind of what's beneath it. But um, it. You know, it, it just being on the list automatically means I loved it. So, mm. you know, there's that. But I just, I, I love the differences between X and Pearl stylistically, uh, uh, as far as, you know, the score and, you know, the, I mean, I just, well, you remember way back in the day when you did the inter review mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. House of the Dead. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> or no, no, no. That was the one you wrote a letter to. Yeah, that's what, yeah, yeah. I remember right. that. Yeah. Dear House of the Dead. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking and, about that. Yeah, as I was making my list, I thought about that too. So I'm glad you remember yeah, that. Yeah, that, it always sticks with me. I'll never forget that. But uh, I, I don't know why, but there was just something 
really creative about the way you approach that. And I, uh, it's, it has always stuck with me. But one of the things that you mentioned in that was how excited you got when you saw the yellow titles come up. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, you see the little thing across the bottom, like the year and all of that. So, and it was because it was very fitting for the time period. Well, he's good at that. You know, I think X looked like the time period. I think Pearl didn't really look like 1918 because everything was Technicolor. It was more like 1939, but it was still gorgeous. I think the score was incredible. And even the font that he chose, it just, the way he immerses everything and uses all these little touches and details i it was incredible so yeah. it was very well crafted yeah 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 it, it it's terrific and yeah like you said the there it's very different in tone from from x but i i might like it more I think most I think most people do or at least in lists that I've heard this year it seems to it seems to creep up a little bit higher I'm not going to say if it does for me or not (laughs) we'll we'll see what happens but um, uh, but yeah I don't think that's unusual I I think that uh, most people do tend to prefer prefer that one and maybe because it seems more like an epic you know, just the style of it is very, it's more cinematic. Yeah. Yeah. And like court referred to it as like a super slow burn and with all due respect to court who, who I love, um, I never really felt like it was a slow burn. I always felt like it was, it was kind of churning. And, oh yeah. No, I, I, I never really got that from it. I, um, I, you know, I like it, it's more character study than X for sure. But I I just think Mia Goth is so captivating in it that you know it's it's kind of cliche but it's like oh you can't look away from her and she's but she is she's so good because you know like there's that fascinating dynamic where it's like she's crazy she kind of suspects she might be crazy her mother a hundred percent knows she's crazy and her poor father is caught in the middle of all of that and. Oh, it's so good. And his facial expressions, when it gets to points where he needs to express <laughs> or you know, when things are going on that <clears throat> he finds fearful or disturbing. And he it's really just his eyes because he doesn't really, you know, he can't really do anything. But just I, I think he sold it really well and so the the father is actually one of my favorite characters in that film even though he didn't even really do anything it just i just loved watching his like inner reactions to mm-hmm. things when they when the shit was going down yeah especially when she takes him out on the pier and you're like oh is, is she about to feed this old yeah. man to her alligator <laughs> And you're like, I don't know if that's going to happen right now because it's pretty early on, but also it could totally happen right now. Um, yeah, oh, it's so good. So good. Um, yeah, Pearl's great. Um, okay, number nine for you. My number nine is Scream 5. Whoa! Right, who knew? Who knew Whoa! that I would have a Scream I, movie on my list? I am, I am shocked. Yeah. I am, but that... Uh, yeah all right well hit me all right so here here's the thing i don't really care about the scream franchise i i think there is exactly one good scream movie or where there was one good scream movie until this one and this one I, i it's hard to put my finger on it it just totally worked for me there was uh the right they sidelined the original cast just enough for me to feel like, oh, they're doing something new here. And I I just dug it. The only thing I didn't really like about it, the uh, Heather Manzanello, Manziello, showing up as like Randy's cousin or whatever, I thought it was like, eh, whatever, fine. Um, but I thought it was, I thought it was very funny. I thought that the kills were brutal. I thought the reveal of the killers wasn't necessarily a stunner, but it made more sense than, uh, again, to kind of rip myself off of that, like, oh, this is Sydney's 
stepbrother's cousin twice removed or whatever that you got to in some of those later screen movies. Yeah. And I just enjoyed it. Like I just had a really good time and I thought what it had to say about the kind of reboots and remakes, it, it, it did what scream did, which is it made fun of that and still did it at the same time, but it did it well enough that I was still engaged through the whole movie and it was, you know, the the first time that um, Jenny Ortega kind of hit my radar. And I was like, oh, she's really good in this. And I can't, now I can't think of her sister's name. The one haunted by Billy Loomis. Oh, yeah. But I, I thought she was good too. And I thought the whole thing of like her being sort of haunted by the force ghost of Billy Loomis was really fun. Um, uh, that was a very interesting way to bring him back and i uh i, I feel like it worked i mean yeah I, on one hand i'm like why are we getting advice from a serial killer but then on the other hand uh I'm, I'm like because it almost makes him seem heroic in a way when he's like nudging her along but then at the same time i'm like yeah, yeah it kind of works you know, it was a fun, it was a fun little addition. I liked having him back. Yeah. And, and him telling her like fairly early on in the movie, like when things are, you know, starting to shake up with like, you know, somebody is trying to kill uh, her and her friends when he's like, get a knife and let's take care of business. And he's like, wait, 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 I'm not a psychopath. I can't do that. And he's like, well, you're not, not a psychopath. Um <laughs> So, yeah, I really enjoy it. Like I said, that that's one of those I was surprised to have enjoyed it as much as I did. And when I was putting the list together, um, I, I kept going back to it and thinking, like, I really enjoyed it. I really had a good time. And it's made me, uh, and man, here's something I never thought I would say. It's made me really interested to see what Scream 6 is going to look like. Because I like this new cast and and the new direction of this series, and and I'm glad that they're, you know, seemingly pretty much done with the old cast, um, and now it's just going to be like all new characters, and and that sounds great to me. I am a okay with that. I really am. I, I think it's time. Yeah, I think it's been time. To well, be honest. Yeah, and and that was something I really respected about Scream 5 is that the old characters are there, but they are not the focus. Yeah. And even when they show up, it's like, oh, okay, this is a nice send-off for these characters, but it's not the point. Um, you know, the the uh Ginny Ortega and her sister are kind of the the real stars of the movie. And yeah. And and also David Arquette. Is, that character is sent off well and uh in, in a way that i really enjoyed so um yeah and maybe it's because so much of the movie is about the reverence horror fans have while still like killing their darlings in some ways and anyway i really enjoyed it so uh what's your your number eight that is glorious oh wow okay yeah, I don't remember if we talked about that one, but, um, or if you, did you see it? I did see Glorious, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I I believe, after I watched it, I sent messages to you and Duncan, and I was like, ah, bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. like, I loved it. I think J.K. Simmons was perfection. Mm -hmm. Like, his, his voice, his delivery, everything about that was just, it was scary at times, funny at times bloody as hell and uh i really like the ending of it and i just like the whole idea plus i mean it, you know it's lovecraftian so you, you know can't really go wrong there but i uh i yeah i it surprised the hell out of me when i saw that i had no idea i mean i'd seen trailers for it i knew i wanted to see it but i had no idea i was gonna love it as much as i did so that was very cool yeah i i was not as blown away as some people uh about um glorious but you know i'm not i am not here to uh deride glorious i thought it was really good it just didn't uh blow my socks off the way that it did some people but yeah it was really good really good 
Well, that won't be the last time you have you can say that one of my choices didn't blow your socks off. I guarantee it. Um, <laughs> I will guarantee it. <laughs> uh, well, speaking of something that didn't blow everybody's socks off, but I really love um, my number eight is we're all going to the world's fair. Which, Interesting. I did see that. Yeah, it didn't, I come, love... didn't even come close to my list, but <laughs> yeah, I you know. <sighs> The more I've thought about it, it's one of those movies that has been a bit of an earworm for me where I've thought back on it more and more. And I really, really like it. I really like what the movie has to say about the isolating nature of the internet, especially sort of coming out of the pandemic and lockdowns and stuff like that. And where being in a place where the internet was really the way that a lot of people communicated and found community and how the movie does a really good job, I think of showing that it can give you a simulation of community, but not really community. And also, you know, like they're, they're like the, these recurring images in the movie of this sort of rundown gray town that uh, Anna Cobb's character is in and her going down much like something in the dirt you know i'm just kind of fascinated by characters that sort of get obsessed with some like bit of you know urban mythology or something like like she does in this movie and um yeah i i I mean i felt like it was really tragic and um maybe not outright terrifying at any point but i found it disturbing and and especially once she gets involved with the the older guy that you're like oh i think this is probably going to go bad but it goes bad in a way you don't necessarily see coming yeah. entirely yeah um but yeah i just it like i say it's one of those movies that really lingered the way that like a really a, a really good nightmare will just stick with you where you're like that didn't make perfect sense but there was something about it that echoed and uh so yeah i i really liked it i think uh i i did like a lot about it my biggest issue with it was i just felt like it went on longer than it needed to and it's not like it was excessively long or anything i just didn't feel like that it just it felt dragged out to me and i was just like oh no let's go let's go let's go and because i just felt like there were so many i don't know it felt like every scene just sat a little longer than it need to uh but uh you know i'm actually i'm glad it made your list i think that's cool you know yeah because i haven't heard anybody really talk about that movie so that's yeah it, it was one duncan uh and i i think he and i are the the weirdos that are like and we're all going to the real world's fair is really good. Um, so I think, I think he and I have kind of fallen in love with it in a way that most people do not. Well, I think the two of you are just weirdos full stop. Yeah. Yeah. That is, <laughs> that is absolutely not an argument. Um, all right. Where are we with a, your number, number seven? seven. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. And that is the black phone. I um I love Derrickson. I love Derrickson and Ethan Hawke, mm-hmm. and I think that uh, Ethan Hawke, his portrayal as the grabber was just fantastic. I loved the coked out deputy so and so, as his brother. Uh, I even enjoyed the kids, uh, which you know, you know me. That's not going to often happen, but these kids were really good actors and. Yeah, I thought it was uh, another film that really captured the time period really well. Uh, I I can't remember his real name, but Toffler from um, uh, Ravenous as Mm -hmm. the drunk dad. I thought he was great. Um, I just, I, I just was really, really, really impressed with that. And it was a movie that I waited for for a really long time. And Sometimes when you do that and then you actually see it, then you can just, you can be let down. This one did not let me down. I loved the hell out of it. So, and even if it is a PG-13 movie, I don't, I don't think it hurt the film. Yeah. I don't, you know, 
Poltergeist is PG, Jaws is PG. I don't, I don't, if a movie is PG or PG 13, I don't hold that as, no, as I mean, a marker that it, it can't be good. Um, no, absolutely not. There are a lot, a lot of great films yeah. that, uh, that have, that don't have R ratings. And so I don't think that's a negative out of the gate. And especially when, when it's designed to be that way. So it's not like they cut it down to make it a PG-13 film. They they were doing that from the beginning. So that typically um, is is good, mm -hmm. you, know, when, you know, rather than having to trim scenes down to fit the PG-13, because then it can sometimes show. Yeah. Well, we're going to go see yeah. that, uh, the, the... Megan. Megan, that's PG-13 yeah. this weekend, and I'm really... I am too. You know, I got no... No qualms seeing it. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping it scares the hell out of the kids. I am really excited. I've been waiting for that movie for months. So, and I just think it looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. And that seems to be the vibe is that it's kind of bonkers. And that's exactly what I want out of it. Yeah. I've heard people say everything from, you know, it's, it's campy, kind of like uh, in the style of Malignant, mm -hmm. which that's not going to hurt my feelings because I fucking love that movie. And uh, it's like, yeah, if you want, they're like, if you want something like serious and dark and scary, then this isn't the movie for you. But if you want something that's kind of crazy pants, then then go for it. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I'm, I'm on board with it. Um, uh, all right, so my number seven is one of your honorable mentions, which is Orphan First Kill. Ah, uh, what? And <laughs> in in terms of just sheer awesome. joy, yes. when I watched a movie this year, Orphan First Kill may be the most fun I had watching a movie. It was uh, real fun. It was real fun. And then when you find out the whole bit with Julia Stiles, <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, all right. So that's the thing is the first like 20, 30 minutes of it. I was like, well, this just feels like a retread of the first one. Right. And Which then, is what I expected. You we, know, a hundred percent. That's exactly what like, oh yeah, you're just gonna, you're just going back to the well too many times with this like orphan is fine it's a little long for my money but it's still really fun and i like orphan and then you know that 20 30 minutes of the movie the orphan for skill makes a left turn and i was like oh my god what is this movie and it just got more like the way that i described it to people is it's like a big budget lifetime thriller and uh -huh. that is not a negative like it is it is bonkers it's very silly it's very campy but it it does exactly what i want a sequel to orphan to do which is to not just like expand upon the world or whatever but like take the premise and have fun with it mm -hmm. and it was so much fun like i was just cack like there's that great shot i think I've, i may have even talked to you about this but it's the scene where she steals the suv and just turns up the radio and lights a cigarette yes and yeah. it's like man this is a delight um i love everything that this movie is laying down i thought it was so so good um, but yeah, so that's my number seven, it, a, a total hometown favorite orphan for skill is tremendous fun. I will second that. I had a really great time watching that. And like I said, I was surprised cause I was expecting it to be more of the same mm -hmm. and it, uh, kind of starts out that way. And then you're like, Oh, here we go. But then, yeah. Uh, when it comes into its own, it's then you, you know, you find yourself like, sitting up without even realizing like sitting up and like oh here we go <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like what so, wait, yeah. what is going on in this movie right yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like oh oh shit what what <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 oh yeah it's so much fun uh, and i feel bad for the dad in the movie who is the only character that doesn't know what the hell is going on at any moment yeah um but but it's oh it's so funny 
Awesome. I love that. I am loving your list. I really am. Cause I, I, uh, people are used to you. I mean, and, and I feel like people expect you to just have a list full of, um, I don't know, art house, smarty movies. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I'm, and yeah, you know, but you have a, yeah, you know, you have your fun side and uh, well, which, I mean, you, you're always fun. Even if we're talking about art house smarty movies, you're still fun. But I, I love the fact that you've got something like Mad God, and then even higher up the list, you've got Orphan First Kill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's. I funny. mean, look, there there is a world in which Orf, Orphan First Kill is my number one. That, <laughs> that, that was a thing I thought, and I was like, eh, I don't know. It's like it doesn't have enough substance for that. But that's not complaining about the movie because the movie is perfect. What it intends to do, it does perfectly. Um, it's just there were other movies that I thought were a little more ambitious that were, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of like the the diver that does a perfect swan dive and that's Orphan First Kill. And then you've got the diver that is like the triple Lindy or whatever. And it's like, well, I got to take my hat off to that because that was a whole lot tougher. Um but it doesn't mean that went a great swan dive. That's a very apt analogy. Very good. Uh, all right. <laughs> and what's, what's, accurate. What, yeah, what's your number six? Well, um, mine is the second half of a movie I've already mentioned. Not the second half. It's like the first half, I guess. But uh, the other part. And that is X. Oh, very nice. Yeah. I... Um, I really loved that one. I love the seventies feel of it, the grittiness of it. I think all the characters were really great characters. They weren't assholes. Mm -hmm. These were good people. And I gave a shit about them. Um, except by the time we get to the end with Jenna Ortega, I kind of wanted to beat her into a pulp, but <laughs> mm -hmm. just the very, the very end. But it had a brutality that I wasn't necessarily expecting and uh, just a lot of heart. Uh, also as batshit crazy as Pearl is, I kind of see where she's coming from in that movie mm -hmm. uh, more so than in Pearl. Like i I feel like in X it was uh, at least where her thought processes are coming from are very relatable. I, not the way she acts on them, but the way that, where they come from and you know i felt for even her you know till we get to the end and then i'm just like die bitch but uh, it's yeah it, it it surprised me again like i there were there was a lot of that this year so yeah i loved it yeah yeah it's yeah 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 well we might talk about that more later um my <laughs> my number six is the black phone which uh okay popped up on your list as well and i can only reiterate what you said it's it's a terrific movie it's got uh a really um really satisfying sort of theme of bullying and its effects and and it's one of those movies where like every little thing in the movie leads up to the ending where it all sort of comes home to roost and it's just a really fun smart script and uh yeah you know and shout out to joe hill um yeah for, for writing a great story that made a great movie and um black phone was was a, like kind of a surprise for me because scott derrickson i've i like but i haven't always been like die hard for him and after seeing black phone i was like oh yeah he can absolutely do great work in the genre um even if I, upon rewatches, if I thought Sinister was like, eh, some of this feels a little cheap, but um, it's, yeah, I, uh, Black Phone's fantastic. Nice. Uh, I can't agree with the Sinister thing. I love Sinister, but yeah, I, oh, right, except for that very like last yeah, ghoul at the end, you know. The like you know popping into frame at the end. I hate that. Yeah, but. and and like the kid coming out of the box. I was like, eh, I just feel like this is a cheap shot for a scare. Like I like I think the black phone does such a better job of being like eerie and creepy and dread inducing, 
and sinister feels like a, a fun house which yeah. which maybe that's all it ought to be so sometimes that's all you need yeah yeah um all right we're in the top five territory here yes we are what is, this what is, is when your it number gets five? For real. Um, well, it was another surprise, and that is Barbarian. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had a blast with oh. that movie, and uh, it is nuts. It's just nuts to the core, but the way it starts out and then where it ends up, <laughs> it's just like, what just happened? <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it was so much fun so yeah I had, that was uh all the performances there i thought were fantastic um justin just, long is so good in that yes and see i had no idea that he was was in it i didn't know about richard break i didn't know anything uh, other than the trailer and i think the trailer was a really excellent trailer uh, because it didn't fuck it up you know, mm-hmm. so, um, yeah, that was just a really fun experience. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, a, a terrific film. Um, my number five is Smile, which is a movie we talked about not not very long ago at all. Yeah, uh, but I was actually waiting to see where that would place because yeah. I knew it would. I yeah. knew it would. Uh, you know, right, right at the entry to, to my top five, I think Smile is, you know, for all the reasons we've talked about before, I think it is scary. I think it does one of the best jobs I've ever seen of showing the blend and breakdown of reality versus this fantasy, this cursed life that. Uh, Sosie Bacon is living. I, it, uh, it's just terrific. I, 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 Smile is like one of those movies. If somebody was like, I want to see something good and scary that, um, you know, isn't too esoteric or something. It's not, you know, we're all going to the world's fair. I'd be like, Oh, have you seen smile? Smile is creepy as shit. You know? I mean, plus it made a whole lot of money. And uh, Brian was telling me the other day, which I think this is awesome, that uh, Paramount has uh, decided they are, because of the success of that film, they are uh, like opening a, like a horror branch of, a specifically horror branch of Paramount. And they brought in a guy who is going to be heading it up and they're aiming for like five to six movies next year. Great. I, you know, I, I'm totally fine if there is never a smile to. Oh yeah. I don't think we need that, but I love the fact that it had that much of an impact and it made Paramount sit up and take notice, you know, the same studio that was in, that was so embarrassed of Jason all those years, but they kept <laughs> making them anyway because they kept making money and then they were, um, but they didn't want to. And now they're like, Hey, wait a minute. This horror thing is kind of viable. And, um, they, I love the amount of of marketing they put into that movie. They mm. really pumped the money into the marketing for that, and it worked. Movie sh- movie made a shit ton of money. I think it's very deserving of it. So yeah, that was yeah. Even another that was an I, that was another surprise because I didn't think it was going to be that good. I didn't really think it was going to have that much depth. I, I didn't. I mean, you know, everybody said it going in, like, oh, it reminds me of Truth or Dare, or it reminds, you know, and that's kind of was that what I was expecting is something along those lines. I was just hoping it would be better, and uh, yeah, it really was, like, way, way better. Yeah, 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 it's, oh, it's so good. Um, what about your number four? Okay, all right, this is where I think I'm going to lose you. Okay, all right. <laughs> And that is okay with me. But, um, yeah, this is... Okay, number one takeaway from this film is I had a blast. I watched it multiple times. And I just had a lot of fun with it. And that's because it was uh, just gory as hell. And just, uh, like, this is the first time we got an actual massacre in a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And oh no, that's right. I know, I know, I know. I can't help it. I don't care. I had a really good time with that movie. 
All right. So, I mean, I, I can't go with you there. I, I thought that was I know. A, a pretty dreadful movie. But I know. It's all right. Um, <laughs> there's always one on your list where it's like the it's it's the uh, nightmare remake effect where <laughs> you just come out with one movie that's like, really? Yeah, I know. I know. But, and so high up. Like, I did. Yeah. I, I'm, I am. I know what I did. I, I know what I did. <laughs> I, I, I'm glad okay. you at least recognize the <laughs> mistakes that were, were made. No, I, I know. you know, but I, I really love the fact, you know, as you were saying about my list earlier, I love the fact that you always have this like curveball of like <laughs> this movie that I never would have like when I was going through my list and I saw that movie come up as I was going through like the letterbox diary. And I was like, right. oh yeah, this, like if I were putting together a 10 worst of the year, it would be on there. And hey, I've seen it on those on the worst of the year lists, and uh, it doesn't surprise me. I have seen it on a couple of other best of the years, so I'm not the only one in the world. But um, I just, you know, I can't. And honestly, I think it is. I think it's more thoughtful than people are giving it credit for. I really do. Like Richter is my favorite character of the year. I absolutely love him and the arc that we took with his character. Cause you know, you first see him, he's got a gun, he's rolling coal. He comes off like a straight up asshole, but then he, it, it ends up that that's not who he is at all. And you know, I respect that. So yeah, I had a good time. All right. I mean, it, again, it, I, I can't argue with it cause I love the fact that it, you're just like the rest of the world be damned. <laughs> I, I I love this movie. Um, <laughs> all right, yeah, no, I mean, you know me. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I've known you too long to. I I don't know why I'm even surprised. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, your number one could be a film strip. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> my <laughs> my number four is Hellbender. Oh, that was one that I meant to put on my honorable mentions list. I love I Hellbender. Um, Hellbender rocks. That movie rocks so hard. Yeah. It is. I had a really good time with that one too. Yeah, it, it's. Uh, if you if, for folks listening, if you haven't seen it, Hellbender is the story of a mother and daughter family of witches. And the daughter is sort of coming into her own and starting to realize her powers and so forth. And the mother kind of keeps her away from the world beyond their house and their land. And at first it's like, well, maybe it's to keep her safe. And then as the movie goes on, you start to think, well, maybe it's to keep the rest of the world safe from her. And... Uh, when they're not busy having these, you know, trippy, psychedelic, magical journeys because they're eating worms and whatnot, they are hanging out and playing great music in their garage. And it all painted up right. <laughs> just for themselves, which I love. It's so good. I, it, like, I love everything about the vibe of this movie. It is, it, it's kind of punk rock. It's very, I like a good witch movie and this is a good yes. witch movie. And uh -huh. yeah, I just, I, mean, I think Hellbender is uh, just a, a, an absolute gem. And it was made by a family, which I think is very cool. I, like, yes, that is another thing. They, they did uh soft for digging recently. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so they've got another movie that came out this year that I haven't seen. Um, and I need to, because I just think they're like super talented. Um, I never actually saw soft for digging, but I remember when it came out, I didn't realize it was the same people. I'll get on that shit now. Yeah. I remember Duncan kind of giving me a heads up on that one. He was like, man, soft for digging is good. And, huh. um, and then they did Hellbender on the heels of that. And yeah, it's, yeah. Oh, it's so good. Oh, I love Hellbender so much. I kind of want to watch it right now, now that we've talked about it. Yeah, um, it is definitely good stuff. It was very close. Very, very close. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's your number three? 
Uh, this may not be a surprise, but my number three is The Cursed. The uh, period werewolf flick that came out really early last year. I want to say it was like February. You know, I haven't seen that. I, I really I enjoyed need, I, it. I must, apparently. I, well, I mean, you know, TCM was my number four, so. <laughs> right, 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 right. But I've seen that, and I, you know. <laughs> no, this was, um, it was very uh, just gothic and moody and had a, a fantastic atmosphere. And it takes place in France in the 19th century. I want to say. Okay. And um, so it's a period piece and it's a werewolf movie. How can I not love it? And uh, I did. I really enjoyed that. It was, um, I wasn't sure what to expect. I'd seen trailers for it, but I still wasn't sure exactly if I was going to really like it. And I did. I loved it. So yeah, I do recommend it. Okay. Right. I'll give it a shot. It's one of those that I've almost hit play on, you know, a number of times and just didn't you know for yeah. for whatever reason i mean it yeah i have a lot of those right you know like it took me forever to uh get around to speak no evil even after you told me like no 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 it's good um and i was like well yeah but how do you feel about texas chainsaw massacre <laughs> <laughs> before before i hit play on another of your recommendations <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> um my number three is alex garland's men um i still haven't seen that it is uh it, it's super artsy fartsy no doubt about it speaking of artsy fartsy movies on my list um <laughs> this is no orphan first kill uh, there are plenty of people who would absolutely hate the movie men and they would not necessarily be wrong, but there is a scene at the end of men that is the most like violent body horror I've seen in a movie in like since the prime of Cronenberg where I was shocked to be sitting in a movie theater and seeing this unfold on the screen. Oh, wow. It was great. I really loved it. And I really like, I mean, the movie ultimately is about, you know, the, the micro and macro aggressions that men visit on women and, uh, but also sort of like asking the question of why, like why, why do men behave like this? And, and, um, and it kind of gets to an answer. Like it, it's, it's the reason I like it so much is that, the the body horror and so forth of the movie is sort of answering the question that it poses in a very symbolic and disgusting way and i really dug it i yeah you know i this has been a real divisive movie i think with a lot of people but i i think men is tremendous i think it's really 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 good obviously for it to be in my top 3 um but also it's just yeah. gross in a way that I really get behind. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, it's one of those that I had planned. Uh, baby cat is having a fit. I don't know what's going on over there. Um, that I had planned to watch. And I just, I, I just didn't, I just didn't get the chance. And, um, like I was still squeezing in movies up until a couple days ago. So, uh, um, I tried to work it in there, but, and I was like, well, <laughs> You know, if if I have to let it go, chances are it may not make my list anyway, mm -hmm. so it's probably okay. But now I'm kind of like shit. <laughs> I, I should have made the time. I, I, I made the time for Don't Worry, Darling, and I didn't make the time for that. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet. Um, Actually, I liked it. I did. Uh, it's not a story that we haven't seen before. It's not even all that surprising, but I just enjoyed the look of it, and I enjoyed the performances. So. Um, yeah, it, I mean, that's on my list of stuff. That, that's one that I'll watch with, with the missus. Um, but yeah, I'm really, I, I'll, I'll be very curious, uh, what you think of, of men when you get around to it. Cause, uh, it is, like I said, it, it's a movie I totally understand if you walked away from it being like, that movie is pretentious and uh, you completely up its own ass. 
Um, but I thought it it actually was getting at something really interesting. Um, okay. Uh, okay, number two for you. Um, well, this one was actually, you've mentioned it before, um, but uh, it was just super high for me, and that is fresh. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's kind of why I didn't weigh in much when you were talking about it back then, other than just to say that uh, Sebastian Stan is was incredible. I think his charisma, his charm, I, like, as much as I should hate that character, I just can't. I just had a blast it's Mm -hmm. the the style the music uh i mean the fact that in the middle of all that's going on they have this little dance sequence (laughs) it's just great his whole bit in the kitchen when he's in the kitchen alone and he's packing up the boxes uh you know just kind of dancing along and it's as if he's doing something completely innocuous you know but he's absolutely not and um yeah, I just thought that was uh, just, yeah, it was a very early watch and uh, one that stuck with me all year long. Mm-hmm. So I loved it. Um, yeah, yeah, terrific movie. I, again, didn't make my top ten list, but I, I had so much fun with it. I thought it was a, a real good time. So I, oh, I get it. Um, my number two is one that you've already mentioned which is uh, Barbarian. And ah. I I loved Barbarian. I thought um, it's one of those movies that like people are right. The less you know about it, the more fun it is. Um, so I won't spoil anything here. But even if it were spoiled for you, it's still really good. Like, like yeah, once I... you know the sort of the direction the movie goes in, it doesn't make it any less cool um and and another movie that much like men it's it, it was weird to kind of put them back to back on my list and a, after i thought about it but they're both movies that are very much about how the 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 misogyny that men visit on women can last for generations and yeah but also barbarian is fun and it's funny and it's surprising and violent and weird and yeah it's it's terrific and and like i said justin long his performance in that is fantastic i I love him as an asshole uh you know i do too and he does it a lot uh that's a that's a role that he seems to be comfortable with but he does it really well Mm -hmm. and i don't feel like he's an asshole in real like he just doesn't come off to me like he would be an asshole but i think he just plays one really well uh a lot of people i think don't seem to like him and i don't get that i've always liked him i've i don't think i've ever seen him do anything i didn't like uh, that i would blame on him you know like there might be movies that he's been in that i didn't love but i don't think it was ever his fault you know, I loved him in like Drag Me to Hell. I loved him in the uh, Jeepers Creepers. Mm-hmm. Like, he just he has great comedic timing too. Yeah, you know, and I just yeah, I enjoy him quite a bit. And like Drag Me to Hell, he wasn't an asshole. He was a really good guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you know, he can do both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's um, he's had an interesting career. And I like the fact that he he sort of aged into being this sort of character actor, and he's he's oh. got you know the the moment of the movie really when he's asking like, "Am I a bad person or am I a good person who just did bad things?" Mm-hmm. And that's sort of the vibe you know of of the film. It, it, that's kind of the question it's asking at least about that character, and. Yeah, it's uh, uh, terrific. I, anyway, obviously, I love Barbarian. So, um, all right, here we are. It's number one time. Yes, it is. It is, and uh, I'm kind of curious what if you have any idea what's my number one. Um, uh, let me let me look. Uh, is it Smile? It is not. And the, here's the sad thing is uh, I actually forgot to mention it in my honorable mentions. Right. And really, it should have made its way on my list. 
And I kind of regret that it didn't because I do really love that movie. But here's the thing. When I was making my list, I'm like, man, everybody's talking about that. And it's worthy of it. It's totally worthy of it. But I was like, I want to kind of, like, I know I'll mention it at some point while talking about the other ones. And I kind of wanted to highlight some other things. So it ended up not making my list. But um, that doesn't mean I didn't absolutely love it. I totally did. But no, my number one Mm -hmm. is The Sadness. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did love that movie. I did. Yeah. I loved it. I've watched it multiple times. And every, like, the thing about it that I find so, just apart from the crazy ass violence, holy shit. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of those movies where, uh, like Brian says all the time, you have to know your audience. Like, you can't just recommend it to anyone. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, but, and I like movies like that. I like movies that are very like you either you're going to be able to handle it or you're not. And uh, I know a lot of people that I couldn't show that film to, but I also know a lot of people that I could. And the thing I love about it is just, I think again, it has a depth to it that I don't know. Like you can watch it surface level and just, just be engrossed in the violence and the action. But if you just watch it and start thinking about it. And like, I even did uh, some research on, um, on like cultural norms and like societal norms and uh, in Taiwan, uh, just to see if there were cultural, like cultural bits that I was missing. And there are some uh, like very subtle things uh, that you would Things that you would do over there, would never do over there. What is wrong with her? Um, (laughs) uh, Because it would be considered rude. And and so things that like Americans wouldn't catch because it's, you know, culturally we're different in as far as things like that are concerned. But it, I love the fact that the people who are affected cannot control what they're doing they know what they're doing Mm -hmm. and they can't control it and so then you'll just see tears rolling down their faces while they're committing these things and it's like the sadness is theirs and i just i don't know there's something about the unbound id Mm -hmm. (laughs) and uh and the darkness in all of us that I really appreciate. I also think that, and this was a theory that I was expressing to Brian. I mean, like, obviously the whole idea behind the Alvin virus came out of the pandemic and the fact that it was being politicized and all those things that they mentioned in the film. But another thing that I think was probably born of that was the fact that during the, during the pandemic, toward the late stages of it, people started just turning on each other Mm -hmm. and being just rude and horrible to each other. And I feel like that was reflected in that as well. Like, it just feels like these ideas. um, Well, of course, I think the biggest influence on it was the comic. What was the name of it? The red cross or the cross. Um, Shoot. Brian knows all about it. He read it, but, there was a comic that I think it's called the cross and it was a, you know, like a virus, I think. And it mm-hmm. would like form a red rash on people's faces, like in the shape of a cross, but it was the same kind of thing. Like they would just lose all inhibitions and just do crazy, violent, whacked out shit. So this is, um, and the director even admitted as much that it, this is, this was inspired by that. But I think you take that and then you take all the shit that was going down during the pandemic and you kind of mix it up into a blender and you get the sadness, which to me was probably, it was definitely the film that affected me the most. Uh, I just, I, it just, I was so into it every, even upon, you know, subsequent watches, I just, it just sucks me in. And 
the uh, the violence is fun and, and is fun to watch. I always like watching crazy violence, but there was just more to it than that. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, you know, I you and I had this conversation back when we talked about it originally. And the reason that it didn't make my list, and, and I don't think it's a bad movie at all. And I think everything you've said about the movie is totally right. Um, I just think it's such a bummer that it is. Oh, it is. It is. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's tough for me to watch. And like I saw it one time and I was like, I'm good. I don't ever need to see this movie again. <laughs> and I think that makes sense. I, I really do. I, I, I get that. Um, and it is a bummer. Like the ending is very tragic. And uh, it's just like, you know, you go through this whole thing and you really want things to come out a particular way. And at times you feel like it will. And then it doesn't do what you want it to do. <laughs> and it's very depressing. But uh, yeah, I kind of needed that. I don't know. I like sometimes I just kind of need that. But I, I, I like the fact that this year was a good mix of just crazy fun and thoughtful experiences. Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, by the way, just to um, verify what you were saying, the comic is called Crossed. Crossed. So, yeah. Okay. I had something to do with a cross. Yeah, but Okay um texas cross face massacre yeah <laughs> is, is the name of it um i would watch that sure you would <laughs> um and uh all right so my number one is a bit of a cheat because it is sort of a tie with x and pearl which i think are companion pieces and probably no okay. surprise that Ty West made my favorite thing I saw this year twice. And like, if I had to pick one over the other, I think it would be Pearl, but I think they're both of a, of a kind. Mm -hmm. And I think the, it is. Um, so here's what I love about X, which is that it is very much Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Un unashamedly. Yeah. But it's also weirdly about ageism and mm -hmm. regret and, um, like, envy and all of these things. And it also manages to be totally gnarly when it wants to be. Yes. And, I, and so I loved X for that reason. And I was like, oh, X is definitely going to be one of the best movies I've seen this year. Uh, cause I just, I love the, the visual style of it. I love the, what it, what it's saying. I love how brutal it gets. And then Pearl came out and was like, oh, well this adds such a great depth to this character. And it's such a like brilliant and beautiful character study of someone who is totally deranged and unhinged. And, um, you know, it's sort of evocative of that sort of southern gothic of stuff like spider baby and um you know like old faulkner and flannery o'connor stories well now you know you're in my wheelhouse now right well, oh, but that, although, that's i know you're related to flannery but yeah yeah <laughs> di distantly related to flannery o'connor um uh, i've but, always been jealous of that <laughs> i mean it's the coolest thing about me for sure um, in fact, I was reading, um, uh, a Stephen King novel the other day. I've been reading the, the Bill Hodges, like detective trilogy that King did not so long ago. Mm -hmm. And in the second book, uh, called finders keepers, he writes about a letter that his fictional author, that's kind of loosely based on John Updike, uh, wrote to Flannery O'Connor. And I was like, oh, wow, I, you know, here I'm reading a letter to an honest to goodness, you know, relative of mine, um, which I thought was real cool. Um, that is cool. And, you know, she is one of my favorite authors. Oh, I, she's so good. Uh, I love Southern Gothic. It is, um, yeah, uh, and there are, you know, a lot of movies that, that have that same 
sort of theme to it. And if you can work that into your movie, you're going to make me happy. You're going to make me real happy. But there's something just about uh, those stories. They're always with, the, well, there's, you know, the grotesque element and then the, the just, they're tragic. Um, but now the cat is puking. <laughs> oh, wow. Cat's really um, been on a roller coaster tonight. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so... Um, I don't know. I, this had that has nothing to do with the movies we're talking about, except that uh, you mentioned Southern Gothic and got me on a roll. So yeah. sorry about that. But, yeah, um, but uh, you know, I think Pearl falls into that category. Yeah, and, I can see that. Yeah, it's uh, 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 just a, a like X and Pearl are great companion pieces. They're great like bookends. I would almost recommend watching them in that order of like watch X and then watch Pearl, and I think that is the most satisfying way to watch them. And I'm glad they were, were, were released that way, but it, it's also great just to have Ty West wading back into the horror genre and just knocking it out of the park. I am so excited to have him back. Yeah. It's, it's I am. too long. Ty. You know, for years he was um, like, you know, like we'll have a, um, uh, we've talked a lot over the years about up and coming directors or directors that we think have a bright future. You know, that um, Flanagan was one that I was talking about way early on, you know, mm -hmm. back from his very first film. And I was like, I can't wait to see, you know, what more he does. And holy shit, I didn't expect him to have the track record that he has, but um, you know, he's killing it. Mm -hmm. And so there are always that little um, uh, Jim Mickle for a while there was, mm -hmm right in it and then he kind of uh went away and he started doing tv and he got out of horror and then you know ty west went away from horror and i'm like fuck man you were doing so well what happened <laughs> and then uh, you know to have him come back not just once but twice in the same year and we still have maxine to look forward to which i'm very excited about mm -hmm. um I, I just and i didn't see it coming i had no idea you know, I remember the, when I first saw the trailer for X, I was um, just randomly going through YouTube and it popped up and I was like, what the fuck is this? And then I'm like, oh my God, Ty West is doing a horror film. And I was just so excited. And uh, he did not let me down. He did not. Uh, and yeah. So, uh, you know what? Go ahead and cheat. It's this, it counts. It's the same story. Yeah, you know. yeah. I mean, <laughs> related characters and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think the once again, twenty twenty two, fantastic year in horror. You know, they're they're like if bodies, bodies, bodies had been on my top ten, I would not have complained. Like it, it was, uh, it was a strong year once more. Like a, a and a really nice showing for kind of mainstream horror. That's what really made me very happy is the number of films that we had that were theatrical that ended up making my list or making, or at least were contenders for my list. And that uh, I'm really pleased about for several reasons. One, I just like going to the movies. And if I go to the movies, I want to see a good movie, but I was so pleased that Smile made so much money that something like Top Gun Maverick made so much money just because the theaters needed it. Um, it you know, the the cinemas were it was getting really scary there. It was kind of touch and go for a minute. And um, we've had some that actually did close down. But. You know, the they needed that boost and to see people going out to the theaters again and when they could, you know, now the wait to watch it at home, if there's a wait at all, isn't nearly as long as it used to be. So you could easily just say, eh, I'll wait for streaming. Mm. But um, the movies that are getting people out there and they're not waiting for streaming, that makes me really happy, especially when it's horror fans. Because for a long time, I used to get so pissy because horror fans constantly bitched about there not being good movies in the theater. But yet when there were good movies in the theater, they didn't want to go see them. And I'm like, well, then why the fuck do you think we're not getting good movies? Because nobody's going to see the ones that are out. So like, you kind of have to support it if you expect them to keep doing it. And I feel like that this last year 
the theatrical films we've gotten have been surprisingly good and consistently good. Um, where, you know, I didn't see a single Ouija in the theater <laughs> this mm-hmm. year. There may have been some, but I didn't see it. Like, I, I didn't go see The Invitation. Um, and I it was really, I just heard nothing good about that one. But, which is kind of a shame, because I thought it was an interesting premise. And I was like, yeah, I'll go see that. And I'll still watch it eventually. But, um, you know, so there are some. But everything I saw in the theater, I was happy that I did. You know, and a lot of them made my list. You know, Black Phone, Pearl, X, um, The Cursed, mm-hmm. it just that Barbarian. Um, it, you know, it was a really good theatrical year. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I you know, everything I saw in the theaters, I, and I saw, you know, artsy fartsy stuff like Men, and I, you know, saw bigger budget stuff, and it, it, I, I enjoyed all of it. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, uh, been a, a very strong year. 2022 was great. Um, but all right. So let's, before we wrap up and I think we had, uh, some, some solid lists here. I'm very proud of us. I, I am too. Um, you know, <laughs> and look, varied. They were varied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I would say let's wrap up with, um, what are we looking forward to? Just to give give a couple of movies that you're looking forward to coming this year. Okay, well, one um, right out of the gate is Megan. I've been looking forward to that for a really long time. And, uh, well, for several months anyway. And I just think it looks really fun. So I'm excited about that one. Uh Man, there's so much stuff coming out this year. I was actually looking at uh, Evil Dead Rise. I just saw the trailer for that yesterday. Uh, I did as well, and I thought Evil Dead Rise looked very promising. Yeah, I, I am I am really on board with that. I love the Evil Dead remake, so uh, the fact that this is uh, kind of continuing in the same with the same you know, stuff. Uh, now I I was concerned about it when I first heard the premise, because I was like, how is that not going to be demons too? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm like, uh, like, what can you do? That's not going to be demons too. Well, then when I saw the trailer, it kind of put that to that fear to rest because it doesn't seem like that at all. So it seems like they're concentrating very much on a family. And I love the fact that there are kids in it. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. Like, holy shit. Yeah, You've man. never seen kids in an evil den. <laughs> and some of them kids are getting getting possessed and real fucked up too. I really like that. Yeah. Um I am oh uh today I just saw the trailer for Renfield and I think that looks like it's going to be a hoot. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that as well. I again having seen Nicholas Holt in the menu recently. I'm like, "Oh, okay. Let's give him, you know." Uh Yeah, and I think that Nicholas Cage as Dracula. That's why not? Why the fuck not? I, you know, uh, I like the fact that that trailer kind of hides him until the end, and then you're like, yes. oh, okay, I'm, I, yeah. I can see this. Um, I'm interested in Knock at the Cabin. Mm-hmm. Uh, M. M. Night is, you know, he's kind of touch and go. He has his ups and he has his downs, but uh, I'm always willing to give it a chance, and I think that that. I'm kind of curious to see where it goes because, you know, it's M. Night, so I don't think it's going to go where we think it's going to go or where you would expect it to go. So I'm curious to see what he does with it. But I think that looks fun. Uh, Demeter, I think that's a really interesting idea for a whole film. I'm curious to see how that goes. And, uh, you know, another thing I've noticed is um, this year there are a lot of sequels coming out. A mm-hmm. lot. We've got, uh, you know, Scream 6, Evil Dead Rise, The Nun 2, The Exorcist sequel, which I am really very curious to see where that goes to. I mean, um, yeah, I'm curious. I am not, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic about Evil Dead Rise. I'm yeah. not optimistic <laughs> about an Exorcist remake. It's a sequel. Whatever. I mean, in the same way. <laughs> From the people, what brought you Halloween kills and Which Halloween ends? I did not hate, so they didn't know Halloween ends did not make my list, but I did really enjoy the movie. I don't care what anybody says. 
Um, the pale blue eye. Yeah, I that's a landing really Friday, about. right? God, is that's it what, that? Yes, yeah, yeah it is. Recording this, yeah. Uh, so shit, I'm gonna have. Looks like I'm gonna have a busy weekend, <laughs> but I really do want to see that. Um, I guess that's probably everything I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, I'm curious about Skinnamarink. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, wait, one more. I got a Jamie Jenkins it. Uh, okay. <laughs> cocaine, cocaine Bear. I've got to see Cocaine Bear. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but, like, you know I'm there for it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, um, I'm looking for forward to um, Infinity Pool, the new Brandon Cronenberg oh, joint. Yes, yeah. Um, you know, Scream Six. That? I mentioned. I uh, who knew I would be interested in a Scream Six, but I'm kind of into that. Um, uh, let's see. You mentioned Renfield. We talked about Evil Dead Rise. Um, oh, um, Ben Wheatley's Meg Two is coming out oh yes it is and yeah i want to see what a ben wheatley big budget sequel to meg looks like uh now he didn't make the first one did he no 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 okay because i was just like there's no fucking way that was a ben wheatley movie <laughs> right yeah absolutely not <laughs> okay huh i didn't realize he was making the sequel yeah, that i is... know when i heard that i was like that is the craziest pick I have ever heard. Um, Which means I have to see it. Yeah. Um, and the the other one that I'll mention is a movie called Cuckoo. Yep. Which is uh, from um, Tillman Singer, who directed Lose. And uh, I thought that movie was rad. So, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's some really, really good uh stuff coming down the pipe and you know that's just the stuff we know about there's yeah, well, always you know there's other insidious coming out which i, I know you don't give a shit about right. but i do yeah. <laughs> although it's not directed by james wan so yeah is i Patrick don't have so much... directing that one he is yeah, he yeah. is and i typically am not all that excited about movies that are produced by James Wan, but not directed by, because it's kind of the direction that I want, but I am really curious to see what Patrick Wilson does as a director. I, I, why not? I'm, I'll check it out. You know, I really like him. So we'll see what happens. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for this here episode. Uh, of what you're watching, uh, you know, the, a special extra long bonus episode on account of us doing lists and whatnot. But, uh, uh, Jamie, um, I can't thank you enough and I'm excited. We've got a year's worth of doing this and that makes me very happy and we'll do some more, uh, we'll have to do some more games too. Yeah, that was really fun. Uh, I actually had someone, um, Debbie uh, reached out to me and said that they had they were out of power mm -hmm. for several days, and she managed to find that that video on YouTube. And she and her husband watched it together. And it, you know, she's like, "You kind of helped us get through the blackout." I'm like, "Oh my god, that stuff like that means so much to me." Oh sure, you no, know? and uh, I just love Debbie anyway. But it's uh, I just thought that was really cool. And I had a fun time doing that, even though I had a lot of technical issues. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. That that was not but, ideal, but um, yeah. No, we'll, we'll we'll we'll. I'm trying to figure out something similar to do like that that we can all, you know, participate in 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 the same kind of way because that it was it was really fun. And now that I've got the setup and I know that it works, um, I'm I'm excited to uh to try it. A, a, maybe a different game. Maybe we just do another round. I don't know. We'll do something though. Yeah, but it was it was great. Um, oh, one last question: yeah. Did you watch Glass Onion? I did. I loved it. Me too. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I don't. I'll tell you what. We'll we'll end the show, and then you and I will chat about Glass Onion, so we don't spoil anything. Um, okay. But uh, yeah. So thanks everybody for listening, and we'll be back in a month with more. What you watching? Yeah, I love you, everybody. 